It's the holidays, and one of the things that's great about the holidays is making toys for your friends and family. Here's one that I made uh, the other day, um, and uh, it's a lot of fun. My, uh, my, my four-year-old loves to play with it. But one of the problems it has, like nearly any other project that you would make with a, um, with a Arduino or a similar kind of device, is power usage. If I forget to turn this off with, my, with the switch here, this thing is going to be dead within maybe an hour. And the reason is it's only running a 358 milliamp hour uh, battery, which is pretty common. I mean, it's a tiny little device and a lot of things in there, so I don't have room for a big honking battery. So adults can remember to turn things off, but kids can't. Uh, so that's one very important reason why it's good to know about low-power techniques with Arduinos. Another reason is for sensors. Here's a little sensor node that I made using the low-power Mo lab Motino. Uh, and uh, you can see in this case, uh, this thing has been running off of this battery for almost a year. Um, and it's basically just comes alive every 30 seconds and broadcasts the temperature and humidity. So this is another case where um, uh, you'd never be able to do this unless you apply a, a variety of important low power techniques. So let's get into them. So I thought it would be important to start with this, which is the Pro Trinket. The Pro Trinket is actually made by Adafruit. Love this little device. It's great. You can make all sorts of toys and cool things with it. Um, uh, However, it's got a problem, which is that it's got a lot of power-wasting stuff on here that make it really not great for battery-operated toys. I want to start with just a quick observation here. I've got a current meter set, uh, and what's but basically my test rig is I've got a larger capacity uh, battery um, uh, running through basically a splice so that I can see what the current is. And this is a nice little... Uh, multimeter because it actually can display um, uh, microamps. And what's interesting is when I plug in the circuit, uh, you're going to see how much current this, uh, this, this little device is using when it, when it normally does what it does. Uh, and it's, I think it may actually surprise you a little bit um, what's going on here. So in this case, um, basically, uh, once it boots up, um, I have a, it's sitting in a loop where it basically does nothing. It's actually consuming um, uh, about 15 milliamps of electricity, which is, you know, a little bit more than you'd like. Um, what does that mean? Well, it means my, um, say, take this tiny little battery here, that would basically give you 10 hours uh, of battery on something this, this size. So, um, you know, probably not a great fit. So how do we make that smaller? So here's a quick example of some software that um, tries to make the situation a little bit better. This is uh, basically using a library called Low Power uh, by Rocket Labs. Uh, and what it's going to do is we're going to run the, in my loop, I'm going to run the um, blinking LED on for uh, 200 milliseconds and then I'm going to basically power down for 8 seconds. And this call here basically is going to shut down the ADR completely and wake itself up using what's called the watchdog um, uh, counter which is basically a very, very low power circuit that's running all the time and can bounce and reset uh, at a, a pre-programmed interval. So let's send this in and see what that does to our power usage. Here we have the new uh, software loaded in and you're, every so often you're gonna see a blink from that little red LED. There it goes. And that's the circuit coming to live. Now watch what happens here with the volt voltmeter. You can see that while it's asleep, we're trending at about five milliamps. And then for a second, we hop up to 17. So basically what's happening is um, our, uh, our circuit is uh, basically uh, largely shut down. We've just lost a pretty considerable amount of current from our project uh, just by, by adding that little bit of uh, power conservation. But I guess the question is, where is these 5 milliamps coming from? I mean, my goodness, we've, we've already shut down what you think to be the most uh, power-consuming device on the chip, which is, which is this. So where are, we, where are we losing our 5 milliamps? Well, I think that probably the biggest cause of this is going to be this power light right here. It's on all the time, which I don't think is really all that useful in most applications, but you know, I can see why the Adafruit people decided to put it in there. Um, so what I want to do is uh, I want to get rid of this this uh, LED and see what kind of difference we get. 
All right, so now we got our removed uh, LED. It's been taken off of the board. It used to be here. It's blinking every eight seconds. We come over here, and uh, now we see that our current is now reading 0.83 milliamps. And of course, it's shooting up every eight seconds, every time it blinks, but then it's going back down to that nice low current. So what did this buy us? Well, before we were running 10, 15 milliamps. Uh, a battery like this, which is basically a um, 105 uh, milliamp hour, that would have get, get, you know, the previous, that would have given us about 10 hours. Um, with current like this, we could be looking at more like 100 hours. So just for comparison, um, I have a toy here that I made my daughter, which um, also has a similar low power scheme. It basically is shut down all the time and unless this button is pressed. Uh, and then it boots up and it does something kind of fun. Um, now, I hooked it up to my same current measuring setup. And you can see here that in this particular board, I am actually down well below 0 0.01 milliamps. In fact, I think we're going to have to shift it over to the microamp scale to see it. So this is actually draining when it's not on 5 microamps, which is a tiny, tiny, tiny amount. Um, and... Yeah, so what's going on here? Um, we still haven't really conquered uh, low power with this device. Uh, next obvious candidate here is this little tiny 1.5K pull-up resistor that um, Adafruit's added on here. I'm going to show you where it is. It's right here. And I think what this guy is here to do is... Um, make the USB voltage um, nicer for the, uh, the Pro Trinket. Um, its bootloader is intended to pull the programming off of, the U off of USB. But it's only a 1.5K resistor, so it's actually potentially drawing a lot of current um, in, pulling this, uh, in pulling this line high. So I'm going to try removing that one next. All right, now we're ready to look at this uh, device now that it's now missing its 1.5k resistor which is right there now um, uh, we can now see that it the we actually our quiescent usage is now down to 0 0.03 milliamps or in fact 36 microamps so uh, we've actually made another 10x improvement in battery life on this thing uh, and um, just doing some quick math here you can see that that means that a 105 milliamp hour uh, device, this is actually going to last 2,600 hours between charging. Now, unfortunately, that resistor that I took out had some, uh, had a purpose. Uh, if we look at the schematic to the Pro Trinket, uh, this is where it is. Uh, and um, you can see what it was doing was basically pulling up the D minus. Um, uh, and I suspect the reason why they were doing that was to make the signal a little bit clearer for the bootloader. I'm not 100% sure, but I'm pretty sure that without this, um, this device is not going to program over the USB any longer. And that pretty much confirms it. I, um, I can't get it to program anymore now that I've taken that out. Uh, but fortunately, um, uh, Adafruit gives you another way of programming this, which is with the FTDDI header, which is not a bad way to go. So if we simply solder on a connector onto these six pins here, we can program it the way you would normally program a small board of this kind. Just to summarize here, um, we started here, the Pro Trinket was actually running uh, its simple sketch, would have lasted on a 105 milliamp hour battery about seven hours. Um, now, we uh, ran the low-power sketch code, and that was great. That took us down by a factor of three. Um, uh, but then, um, to really save space, we actually cut almost another factor of ten off of that by removing the power LED, um, which was on all the time and just draining five milliamps of current. Um, that got us down to 126 hours of runtime. Now... Um, I still thought that that was still using maybe a little bit more than it should, so we took out that 1.5K pull-up resistor, sacrificing USB capability, and now we have 2,000, or actually 3,000 hours of runtime. That's a 400x increase in runtime. 
And um, even then, we still haven't done as well as the Motino made by Low Power Labs, which um, in the uh, original application I showed you guys actually runs at only 5.8 microamps. So that is by far the leader in terms of power usage.